from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, February the 21st, 2024. As intense fighting continues between Israeli troops and terror group Hamas in Gaza, the IDF announced the death of 21-year-old Staff Sergeant Abraham Movagen, killed in battle yesterday in northern Gaza amid an uptick in fighting there. In an update of the last day in the Gaza operation, the IDF said its troops have eliminated dozens of terrorists, targeted terrorist infrastructure, including weapons storage facilities, and also finding and destroying another tunnel used by senior Hamas officials. Later today, the IDF said a number of mortar launches from the Gaza Strip towards Israel were detected, saying the rockets fell in an open area and there were no casualties. The IDF said an aircraft eliminated the terrorist and destroyed the launcher from which the launches were made. The Association of Rape Crisis Centers in Israel submitted its first official report to the United Nations today on the sexual assault committed by Hamas on October the 7th and since. Silent Cry includes 35 pages of horrifying accounts of rape and sexual violence used as a weapon of war on October the 7th, and then against those being held in captivity, based on open and confidential sources. CEO Orit Sulitzino stated the report submitted to decision makers at the UN leaves no room for denial or disregard. She said the terrorist organization Hamas chose to harm Israel strategically in two clear ways, kidnapping citizens and committing sadistic sexual crimes. Silence is no longer an option. We expect international organizations to take a clear stance. We cannot stand on the sidelines. Silence will be remembered as a historical stain on those who chose to remain silent and deny the sexual crimes committed by Hamas. Well, one month after medication for the hostages entered Gaza, Qatar said yesterday that Hamas has acquired and has begun delivering those medications to the hostages. This according to Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesman Dr. Majid Al-Ansari, who said this was an implementation of an agreement between Hamas and Israel mediated by Qatar in cooperation with France last month. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office said last night the Qatari announcement is the direct result of Netanyahu's insistence on receiving proof that the medicines have reached our hostages. Israel will evaluate the credibility of the report and continue to act for the well-being of our hostages. Remarks made by Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva this weekend comparing Israel's actions in Gaza to Hitler continue to draw outrage. Lula told a press conference at the African Union summit in Addis Ababa on Sunday what is happening in the Gaza Strip with the Palestinian people hasn't happened at any other moment in history except one, he said, when Hitler decided to kill the Jews. Prime Minister Netanyahu said Lula's remarks had crossed a red line, saying by comparing Israel's war in Gaza against Hamas, a genocidal terrorist organization, to the Holocaust, President de Silva has disgraced the memory of the six million Jews murdered by the Nazis and demonized the Jewish state like the most virulent anti-Semite. He should be ashamed of himself. Chairman of Yad Vashem, Israel's memorial to the Holocaust, Danny Dayan, said drawing false comparisons between the defensive actions of a sovereign nation protecting its citizens from a terrorist incursion, which resulted in the tragic deaths of over 1,200 innocent civilians, and the heinous atrocities committed by the Nazis, who systematically exterminated six million Jews, is unacceptable. World Jewish Congress President Ronald Lauder said Israel's military engagement is a legitimate act of self-defense against Hamas, a recognized terrorist group. The allegations by President Lula are not only historically inaccurate, but dangerously blur the lines of anti-Semitism. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, February the 21st at 7 o'clock, JBS strategic analyst David Harris 
is joined by international human rights lawyer and advocate for Israel, Arsen Ostrovsky. At 7.30, FIDF CEO Steve Weil welcomes vice chair of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, Malcolm Honline, to discuss anti-Semitism stemming from October the 7th, as well as Jewish unity, U.S.-Israel relations, the impact and role of Qatar, and more. At 8 tonight, JBS CEO Justin Pines makes his hosting debut. He is joined by Benny Ladom, an October 7th survivor from Nativa HaAsara, who shares his experience of that day. And Rabbi Chaim Pupko of Englewood, New Jersey, to discuss the partnership developing between their two communities in the aftermath of the tragedy. At 9, Chloe Valdery is on L'Chaim. At 10, it's the Jake Ehrenreich Show with Alan Dershowitz and Marilyn Michaels. And coming up next, it's Thinking Out Loud. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, February the 21st, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader. I'm Yisrael Chaim.